And if you feel good, I will start. All right, let's start. All right. Welcome back, everybody. It's 3 o'clock, and it's time for our next wonderful presentation. This is poster four with um, Dr. David Corliss, and he's going to be talking about the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States and its disparate impact on marginalized communities. I know we've all been looking forward to this one, so without further ado, I'm going to be going off camera and muting my microphone. Good afternoon, good morning. If you're in some other location you may be in, thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to be presenting on this important topic. Uh, let's go to our first slide. So what we're going to be looking at are disparate impacts. And the question becomes how best to measure that. So let me spend uh, j just a minute talking about the study methodology. Now, in this particular study, what we've chosen to do is track deaths rather than cases. So we're, we're not looking at hospitalizations. Those are pretty good. We're going to look at deaths because they're going to be most accurately reported. Now, one of the things you will very often see, you know, I should say, going back to deaths, um, infections, people get sick, things like that. Cases can get missed. This is a disease that for many people has been asymptomatic uh, or people have a very, very minor illness. They don't know if it's, you know, COVID or something else is not asymptomatic, but it's not enough to seek medical attention. It doesn't get reported. The deaths aren't going to slip through the cracks nearly as often as much. And so to get an accurate statistical picture, we're going to use deaths as our metric to track. Another thing that we will have often seen uh, in the COVID pandemic is reporting total number of deaths. Um, you might see this by locality. You might see this overall here that this is going to be, um, uh, it, it, it isn't the best way to count the data. We really want to see per population rates, per capita rates, and we're going to focus on deaths. County level data. So the, this is the data that's been uh, screen scraped by the New York Times and has been uh, made publicly available. It's created by screen scraping county health department pages. It's complete. It's up to date. Uh, and this county level data. So this is going to give us going to give us a number of counts. We're going to pull out the, the mortality. We're going to divide it by the census bureau population of that county. And use those rates as our metric. As we well know. Um, the uh, COVID, uh, coronavirus pandemic has gone through several waves. Uh, what we're interested in this study is to look at the intrinsic, the underlying risk. Now, as it's gone through several, several waves, as we all well know, um, there have been a, a lot of politicalization of the COVID pandemic. Uh, there's been a lot of, um, you know, different kinds of responses. Um, vaccine came out and some people would re reject the vaccines. What we want to look at to get the most accurate picture of susceptibility, to understand in these different populations, marginalized populations in particular, and we're going to compare them to the population as a whole, calculate an odds ratio. But we, we want to look at the very first wave, before there were treatments, before there was politicalization, before we really knew how to respond, the intrinsic, the underlying risk. That's the target of this study. Other studies have looked at other things. They're great studies. What this study seeks to measure is the underlying risk. We're going to look at marginalized communities, and we're going to compare those using an odds ratio if you're uh, black or, or, or you know, person of color, BIPOC, uh, indigenous, other populations. We're going to look at marginalized populations and find out what is the risk of death per capita if you're a member of that population. So we're going to be looking at the first wave because only that gives us that intrinsic underlying risk without interference from evolving medical treatments, evolving practices, and politicalization of the pandemic. So our key metric is going to be cumulative deaths per capita through June 27th, 2020. County level analysis. So what we've done is taken this by quintiles. We've got on the left the, uh, the quintile of all the counties in the country, which has the lowest percentage of, in this case, BIPOC. We've done this for other types of populations. This is illustrative. In the first wave, we've got the 20% the of all the counties that have the lowest percentage population of BIPOC. And on the right, 
we've got the mortality rate, this is per capita, of the 20%, the quintile, the, the county that have the highest percentage. And so we're looking at low incidence of BIPOC on the left, high incidence of BIPOC on the right, County level analysis, we're looking at rates is adjusted to population size, and you'll notice that this just goes up like a stair. That if you have increasing percentage, BIPOC of the population, we see increasing mortality rate in the first blush of the pandemic to look at intrinsic risk. Now, when we look at the summer wave, in the summer wave, a very important thing happens. We see that that summer wave, it only happens in red counties not just red states, you need to look at the county level because some states very, very often you'll see um, you know, the cities uh, very blue, rural areas um, moderately to deep red. And so you really need to do the analysis at a county level. We see that there's, an, um, there's a slight increase when we have the, the second wave, but still the people who are uh, people in BIPOC populations are very much still at the highest risk. But we've got this bump on the left. At this point, we're seeing politicalization. We see the summer wave that only happened in red states. As we go on to the fall wave, wave three. Now, this was expected by a lot of folks. It, it, to my understanding, I should explain, I'm not a physician, I'm not a medical person of any sort. I'm a statistician. This is all about the numbers. You need to seek assistance from medical experts to, to get the, the, the medical review on this. This is all about the numbers. When we get into the third wave, the fall wave, long expected, we see very little differentiation. So this is something that basically hits everybody. This is, again, the fall of 2020. We don't have vaccines yet. So when we look at odds ratios, how much more likely are you at? These are mortality, and you have the... Uh, the highest prevalence of BIPOC population, prison population, indigenous down the line, we see that BIPOC comes at 10 times more likely to die of COVID in the first wave, which gives the intrinsic underlying risk. Now, what we've done here, it, we haven't looked at medical records that report race. Those records are actually very incomplete, and so they're not usable. Uh, for a statistical study. Instead, what we've done is we've taken the quintile with the highest percentage and the lowest percentage of whatever particular prison population indigenous go down the list. Uh, and we're able to get the odds ratio comparing it to the population as a whole and these particular ones, what kind of difference. And so we see the one that stands out the most is BIPOC populations, about half as much risk, but still very substantially higher Prison population, this is from a, a report outside of this study, we see indigenous, we see poverty, we see population density. That is to say, if you take the 20% of counties with the highest population density, persons per square mile, and compare it to the most rural, the 20% of all counties that have the lowest population density, we see that increasing population density is a factor. But by far more important, and you look at, at poverty, yeah, it, people, places where there's the highest poverty, you see an increase, but it's not nearly as much as by race. And so um, BIPOC is a very strong predictor, indigenous prison populations. Sadly, I do not have um, LGBTQ plus data. I understand that that data has recently become available. We hope to get that in the next update of the study. So what have we found? Well, we found our disparate impacts. We found them in per capita death rates. We see that mortality rates increase with BIPOC and with indigenous percent of the population by county. Intrinsic risk, now let me put this odds ratio in perspective. If you look at other research that reports on other pre, we've heard about these pre-existing conditions, cardiac, pulmonary, these kinds of things. The two highest predictors for dying from COVID are one, BIPOC and two cardiac patients, they're about the same. They're right around 10%. And then you drop down to prison population, then they match chronic lung conditions like COPD, and they're about five times the general population risk. So simply being in a high black population area puts you at 10 times the risk of dying. That's the underlying intrinsic risk before, uh, in the first wave, before there were politicalization uh, and uh, uh, treatments began to evolve that some people used and some people didn't. We've got a short, here's a look at our references, contact information at the bottom. And
Uh, do we have time for questions? If Dr. folks have questions, um, they'll be typing them in the chat. Um, sure. What we've been asking folks to do is to type them in and we'll forward them on to, to presenters um, as they come to light. But thank you. This was a, this was a fascinating um, presentation. Great use of um, very challenging data to illustrate a story and to really highlight um, what is going on and um, understanding its implications, you know, in the, as, as COVID evolves and um, really addressing the, these disparate impacts head on and, and really identifying them. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I look forward to publishing the full paper in, in the journal. Oh, definitely. Thank you so much. Um, so we are going to be heading over to our next poster presentation. Um, that's with um, Dr. Shimsham Shimbanbu. Um, that's poster session five. Dr. Corliss, again, thank you so much for your time. Very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.